Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, I'm Christy, AKA That Spanish Teacher. If you are one of my students, stop making fun of my YouTube channel and go study. If you're not one of my students, stay tuned because we have a very exciting video today. I'm gonna do a quick tutorial that's gonna compare for you guys Pear Deck versus quizzes. So if you follow me on my other social medias, i.e. my Instagram, which is where I mostly interact, you know already that I've been trying to do this video. I did a 30 minute tutorial that went down the toilet because the sound was totally screwed up and I was devastated because I thought it came out so good. Um, so I'm trying again and hopefully we'll be more successful and hopefully I can make it a little bit more concise because I learned some stuff along the way while I was shooting the video. Before we get started, if you haven't already done so, please click subscribe because I always put out new videos to show you what I'm doing in my classroom and how to make your life easier because we're all about working smarter, not harder in the classroom because you work hard enough already. Before we get started, one last thing. I just want to give a shout out to my shirt because I love it so much. If you don't already know, I started a line of merch and I'm so excited about it. I think that it's something that could appeal to a lot of different teachers. If you're a Spanish teacher, this is definitely for you because that's what I mainly cater towards, but I'm slowly but surely releasing other styles and other languages. I have some shirts in English and I just started um, my first shirt in French. So if you have a teacher bestie who would look adorable in one of these shirts or who would really appreciate this or you wanted to show me some love, go over to um, pretty much anything that has my tag, um, my thatspanishteacher.com. You can go to my Instagram. It's linked to my bio. It's linked here um, underneath my banner. Um, anywhere, you know, even in my TikTok. So uh, go check those out and let me know what you think. So like I said, today's video is going to be about quizzes versus Pear Deck. So I am a Pear Deck die hard. I have loved Pear Deck for a long time and it has been my go-to for a couple of years now and I recommend it to everybody. But um, the biggest drawback and the hardest reason for me to not be able to recommend it to some people is the price. Um, the premium features which are really useful are a little bit pricey. So a friend on Instagram had recommended that I check out quizzes and I was like, I've done quizzes before. My kids aren't crazy about it. I don't love the format. Like it's nothing exciting to me. And she was like, go check it out. They have some new stuff. And boy, do they have some new stuff. And they are quite comparable to Pear Deck now. So I have gone through, I've played with it a little with my classes and I feel like I am better prepared to show you the differences and how I use it in my classroom and how the two compare. And you can make a decision which one you wanna do because quizzes is free. They do have premium features, um, but the ones I'm gonna talk about today are just the free features because I don't have quizzes paid. But please keep in mind that I do have the pro Pear Deck. So some of the things I'm gonna be comparing are with that pro feature, which is why I love Pear Deck so much. All right, so I made myself a little bit bigger because most of this is gonna be me talking and then I'm gonna show you some of the features on the actual site. So first thing is what I love about Pear Deck and how it actually measures up to what's going on on quizzes right now. So the first thing is, is if you've used quizzes before, they added a whole new feature called lessons. And if you look over here, when I click to create, you can see that when it opens up, it says quiz, which is their like competitive game option or lesson. Okay. So that lesson is the new thing that's really comparable to Pear Deck. It allows you to create slides that have interactive questions. So the first thing that I really love about Pear Deck is that it is anonymous, but not anonymous. So what I mean by that is if you have the pro feature, you as a teacher have a live dashboard that you can preview the students' answers and it says their names. And you can look at that and see who is saying what in live time. And when you project answers, it is anonymous to the students. Although quizzes does have an anonymous feature, um, there's not really a way to do both. So you can either do, they put their names in, similar to how a Kahoot is when they go and join the game, they have to type in their name. So be aware, kids love to use silly names. Um, or you can use the funny name nickname generator. And just like Kahoot has that feature as well, it'll like spin a wheel and make a silly name for them. Um, and that keeps them anonymous. Um, however, it's fully anonymous. You don't get like a spreadsheet as a teacher is like, oh, like mystical monkey was little Jimmy. It's just that funny nicknames and that's it. So just keep that in mind, but it is nice that it has the two options if you wanted to switch it up a little bit. 
Another thing that I love about Pear Deck is the student paste option. So student paste is a thing that you can turn on at any time during a Pear Deck presentation, or you can make the entire lesson student paste. And what that means is exactly as it sounds, the students complete the lesson at their own pace. So one of the things that's nice about Pear Deck that quizzes does not have is that you can turn this feature on and off at any point. So when you are presenting the lesson, you can either do a live lesson, which is synchronous learning, and the students are following along with you at your pace, or you can do an asynchronous lesson where the students can complete the work independently. Um, but you cannot go back and forth. You have to choose at the beginning of the lesson if you want it to be synchronous or asynchronous. But I think it's really great that it offers both options. Another thing that Pear Deck has that's really nice is that you can you can add questions on the fly. So say for example, I forgot to add in a question, I can pop one in right on the fly because Pear Deck has those options that you can insert questions during the lesson. Quizzes does not have that. You have to change it and then once you've changed it, then you can present and change and have those changes. Another great thing about Pear Deck is the pre-made templates. The pre-made templates in Pear Deck are something that are a really nice feature. Some of the things I like about them is that they are tailored for different subjects. And they also have very generalized ones like bell ringer ones, middle of the lesson like comprehension checks, end of the lesson like exit ticket kind of ones. So although quizzes does not have those templates, they do have a lot of ways in which you can edit the slide and you can also search through the library of other teachers. They have a library of public quizzes lessons and you can go through and search and find one and steal and borrow from another teacher, which again, we're working smarter, not harder in the classroom. So we love that option. Something that Pear Deck has that quizzes does not is the pro feature has the drag bowl and the draw options for the slide. So those are two prompts that you can have where students can draw and then students can have a little icon that they drag to different pieces of the screen. Are those essential? No. Do I use them? Yes. All right. So now the things that I absolutely love about quizzes, because there are some things that are like, I'm amazed. So the first thing is the timers. So on Pear Deck, if you want to have a timer on your questions, there's only three options. There's 30 seconds, one minute, and three minutes very random in my opinion. Um, and quizzes is not like that. They have a ton of timers. So, and they go all the way down to five seconds and it goes all the way up to 15 minutes. So that is like amazing. I really like that. Another thing is that it's very game-like. Um, it has fun sounds and like it has like a little clicking timer so the students know like they're running out of time to answer. It has like a leaderboard. It's very like game competition style. Um, and Pear Deck can be kind of dry. So this is a great alternative to kind of spice things up and like, you know, make it feel a little bit more engaging for your students. The best, most amazing thing, the reason why I will absolutely be using quizzes moving forward, the thing that I would sell my soul for Pear Deck to be able to include, why haven't they already, is correct answers. So in quizzes, you can create a question that has a correct answer and it will self-correct. So that includes when you're doing a live lesson and that includes when you're doing an asynchronous lesson. Quizzes has answers for short answers. So my students can do fill in the blanks and get them correct or incorrect. Ugh. If you know me, you know that I'm obsessed with fill in the blank self-correcting work because that's how I do all of my homework. If you don't know how to do that, I have a whole nother video about how to do Google Forms self-correcting work so you don't ever have to grade another homework again. Highly recommend work watching that because it changed my life as a teacher. But that is something that I'm so excited about with quizzes. I definitely will use it a lot just for that feature alone. The last thing about quizzes that I think is really helpful is it has a bit more data. And what I mean by that is Pear Deck, because it doesn't tell you if they're right or wrong, there's no way to mark a right or wrong answer you don't get any data other than what you take out of reading through their answers. Whereas with quizzes, it gives you a breakdown and a percentage of how your students did and which ones they got correct and which ones they got incorrect. The other thing I wanted to address is um, when I first mentioned this on my Instagram, people were like, oh yeah, I thought quizzes was great too until I saw the cheating hacks. And I was like, cheating hacks? back rolls. Uh, yes, just look up quizzes, cheating hacks on TikTok and you will see like 
everything you need to know. And I was like, so you know my little buns went right to TikTok and looked it up. And not only did I find the quizzes hacks, but I found that the site that is the main quizzes hacks is also used for GimKit, Kahoot, Blukit, like everything. And I'm like, y'all really want worksheets again, huh? But anyways, kids are kids. They're going to do what they're going to do. And so I personally had my district block those sites. I'm not going to say what it is just because I don't want to give them more traffic. And I know that there are students who watch my videos. So like, I'm not going to give that to those students because they may have teachers who don't know. Um, but if you are watching this video, the biggest suggestion I can give you is for any of those things, who look at Kim kit, whatever. If you make the set private, it does not work for that site for them to show them all the correct answers. So just keep that in mind when you are creating your first set that you should really make them private. So when you go into quizzes, you click create and we have quiz and lesson. So I'm going to click lesson because that's the part that we're really excited about. So some things that are good to know. If you already have PowerPoints or Pear Decks or whatever it may be that you really already enjoy that you want to utilize now in quizzes, you can. So the first thing is you can go down here to the bottom left and there's a button that says import slides. So you can import a Google Slides presentation you've already made and turn it into a quizzes, which is so great. I love that because that's something I love about Pear Deck is that it's a Google Slides add-on. So anything that you already have, you can use and import here and make it more interactive, which I think is great. Um, so we're going to click add slide. And so you can see there's lots of different options. And again, it shows you some of these as just like options you can do. But for example, I believe YouTube video is a super. Yes, it is. So um, just be mindful of that. But it, for the most part, anything that you really want to use is easy to do. Okay, so you're going to come down here and add slide and you're going to click fill in the blank as we know, that is the part I'm most excited about. So I'm going to say, what is Miss Perel's favorite color? And the answer is green. And something that I really love about this as well is you don't need the caps to match. It's not cap sensitive. I also really like that you can change it so it's not exactly, it can contain it, um, or it can have the equal number for math. Again, as you can see, those have the little lightning bolt, so those are super features. So that could be an example of why you might want to get the super features, but for me so far, it's been working really well to not have it. Then you can go down at the bottom and you can change the timer. And like I talked about before, there's a lot of them. Um, so there are five seconds, which I don't know how much work you can get done in five seconds, but it's an option. And then it goes all the way up to 15 minutes. So there is a lot of choice for you to alternate and you get to choose this on every single question. So it's really great. You can also, if you decide, you can change the type of question up here, um, or if you wanna do a bunch of questions at the same, you can come over here and do copy slide. And so it'll do the exact same thing. And it just makes the formatting a little bit easier, especially if you want all of your slides to have the same timers and things like that. Um, or you can do another self-correcting slide is multiple choice. So you can go in and say, okay, what's your favorite color? Let's do green, blue, orange, Oops, and purple. Um, and then you can change the timer. Let's have this one for 30 seconds. And then when you're totally done, you feel really good about your slides, you can go ahead and publish them. Oh, you gotta select correct option, my mistake. <laughs> and this is where you're gonna change it to private. So that way you can go ahead and make sure that those um, websites don't work because obviously even if you have them blocked in your district students have cell phones so especially if you're doing an asynchronous lesson it's not really helpful to have it be cheated on so just to show you what a finished lesson might look like for me um, this is one that I created for the subjunctive which is a really tricky topic for students and as you can see how I can do a live lesson or assign it as homework if you want to assign it as homework, you can do a custom deadline so students can't answer it after a certain time. You can even create classes, which I think is super cool. So the classes within quizzes, you can force it so when students sign up, they have to include a parent email. So you can literally send their scores directly to their parents. Like, 
That is amazing. <laughs> I love that. I'm definitely setting that up at the beginning of the year next year. I think that's really cool. Um, again, you can choose whether they want the name factory or their real names, the timer stuff, the leaderboard. I can't stress enough. If you're going to do a live lesson, do not do the leaderboard. It takes or ever. Um, and I always do shuffle answer options because I'm lazy and I always make the first answer the correct one. And then I just make the system shuffle it for me. So that way I don't have to think about it. If you were going to do a live lesson, this is what it would look like to start. Similar settings to what we just talked about. And then you can click present and then it will have a join code similar again to how you would do a Kahoot. Um, so let's do here, we'll do the copy link and then I'll join in another tab so we can actually see what it looks like to be on the student end. All right, so I did generated names. So Fava Frankenstein is what I get. Love to see it. Um, and then I've joined. And then over here on the teacher end, I can see now that I have one student. It's Fava Frankenstein. And you can choose to kick kids out if you want to as they're entering the game if they do silly names that you don't like. Um, and then you can go ahead and start. So once I start the lesson, it's going to go to the first slide. If it's just a regular slide, it's just information, it doesn't do anything, you have to move through it. Um, but if it's not, if it's going to be a slide that has questions on it, as you'll see, my next one is, I'm gonna click next slide, and then as soon as I do that, it starts this countdown to the question. And you can see there's the time over here, you can disable it if you want. I'm gonna mute this down because I don't want that. Um, and there's different options of how you as the teacher can view this on the board. You can do full question view, in which case it literally shows the full question on the board. You can do responses view, in which case as myself, um, the person is answering, you can see what I actually submit. I'm gray because I haven't answered yet, but I'm gonna go over to my me side and I'm gonna put in quiero, which is the correct answer. I've submitted. And now, great, I know I got it correct. And you can see here um, in responses view, I can see Fava Frankenstein wrote Quiero. So that's kind of how, if you have students have their real names, you could go through everyone's answers like this on the board. Or you could do anonymous and you could go through their names individually and no one knows who it is. And then participants view is just shows you who has and has not answered. It's gray when they have it answered and then it pops up in color when they have. And then the chart view is what comes up at the end of the question after either time runs out or everyone's answered. Um, and so quiero will be highlighted as the correct answer. It will show you how many people have gotten that correct answer. Um, and then it'll just say incorrect responses. So anything that's not quiero and it'll give you the number. So that's really nice for you as a teacher to have that breakdown immediately to see just like what's the percentage of who's getting it right or wrong, even on a fill in the blank, which is another reason why I love it. Um, you can skip down. I'm going to skip down to show you a multiple choice slide. And it changes the music too, which is kind of fun um, when you do the different types of questions. So the multiple choice has totally different than a normal one. Um, and then over here on the student side, you can see now I have multiple answers. So I'm going to choose estresado. Yeah, and I see I got it correct. Um, it doesn't show them automatically if it's correct or not. It ha everyone has to answer first. It's only showing me immediately because I'm the only player. And last but not least, as you can see here, once the quiz has ended, you can go in and look at the reports and you get a accuracy percentage um, and how many people were in it. And then you can actually go down and review and see how many they got right, how many they didn't even see or they didn't do or whatever it may be. And like I said here, you can email it to a parent if they sign up with their guardian email, which is so nice. Um, and there's just like a lot of data that you can look at to better get a better understanding of where your students are at. All right, so that is it on my Pear Deck versus Quizzes comparison. If you liked it, please give this video a like, share it with another teacher who might benefit from this, um, and please subscribe to my channel so that way you can keep up to date on what I'm doing in my classroom and continue to work smarter, not harder. See you next time.